Hi, my name is Brahim Gedin, and I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Telus Communications. Uh, I'd like to spend uh, the next 10 minutes or so to talk to you about what we've done in transforming overall our business models. And uh, being uh, the technologist at Telus, I think it's you'll find that I'm anchoring a lot of what I'm doing with the work that my team and myself have done on the technology side. But, but one thing for sure, it's there to impact the business model. I'd like to start off with one thing first, is uh, what's changing is who's the provider? I mean, that's a question we never ask ourselves. Like in the old days, the telco was the provider. The last 10 or so years, the cable co became the provider, and then you had the over-the-top providers. But I venture to say anybody with an internet connection is a provider. So what does that mean for the role that we're playing as service providers, traditional service providers, where the network was the service? It's very critical to start looking at three things, I believe, and then the whole decoupling of the network through subscriber information, the way we manage the service, and the way we manage our network and resources and how flexible that is in conjunction with the ever-changing device world. So, so before I go on and talk about these three things, I'd like to start off with it's critical to have a foundational element. And in the next chart, all, all we're talking about is in the year 2000, we decided we need a single protocol, single layer, that would serve as the transport and the control plane for our network, no matter what it is, broadband, internet, wireless, business. And in the year 2000, where we started to move everything to IP, and everybody thought we were crazy. And by 2004, we, we finished our transformation, and we were superstars, which is actually a lot of comfort on the strategy, but at the end of the day, we've done that transformation. It is important for hygiene. And the reason it's important is it's the first step as a foundational element if you are a facilities provider, and TELUS did start that way. So if you look at the next chart, we didn't do it to make the Cisco's of the world happy or the Junipers or the Alcatel Lucens or the Ericsson, all my usual partners, or the Huawei. We did it to make sure that as the applications evolve, and they evolve through IP, they are enabled. They are speaking the same language. I, I, they're not speaking the same thing yet. They're speaking the same language. So when we talk about unified communication, you need a foundational element for that. And that's what we built on the last couple of, well, more like five, six years. And it's more to enable the shared platforms or the shared services across multiple platforms. So if you look at the next chart, I, I tell that to everybody. We're networked. What next? And I think sometimes people forget that uh, we get so busy because that's our background. It's either IT or the network. We get so busy out with uh, spending time on the uh, network or the IT without forgetting, well, move, moving beyond, what does that really mean? And in this chart, it goes back to the three covenants of the new business models. One is, well, how are you going to harness the device ecosystem? What about applications and content? How do you enable them? And the third bullet is, what about that subscriber information? Because at the end of the day, if the subscriber is not happy, it doesn't make sense to them, they won't pay for it. And on the left side, I've put everything from Adidas to, to Rexall to Burger King to my favorite restaurant uh, to the Fairmont chain of hotels. All these are service providers. And, and we sometimes miss that, that little subtle point because we only think of service providers as people who are internet service providers, wireless, cable, or traditional networking service provider. So, so, so if you look at as that changes, tell us took a conscientious decision. We should make sure we partner with people who are best in class at what they do and enable the applications. So, so we set up massive investments on our online charging, on our subscriber information system, on our OSS, BSS, to enable the applications wherever they may be, wherever they may come from. So, so we've taken the lead in Canada on the one API pilot with the GSMA. And I believe Canada is the first country in the world to have a national ubiquitous one API pilot. And, and the intention is, if you're connected, then the whole world should be an application store. It's not to take away from the, the RIMs of the world or the Androids. It's actually to complement what they've got. In addition, we partner with Alcatel Lucent on, on their storefront. Same thing with Huawei on the, all the content that comes from China. And their service delivery framework compatibility with TELUS was unbelievable. Uh, we cannot forget also how we can enable the devices with the likes of Obi from Nokia, RIM, uh, Apple, of course, Motorola and Android. So there's a whole bunch of things. And if you don't have the right infrastructure, you're not able to enable those service or monetize them. And we can't forget that we're not doing this just for proving the technology. It's got to make business sense. So if you look at the next chart, I, I, I am actually flabbergasted with 
all the stuff on identity that's coming up. And I believe the next year will be the year of identity. We've had cloud for a couple of years. We'll have identity for a couple of years. And it's one of those wonderfully abused words. It means something different for every person you ask. For some people, it's single sign-on. For some people, it's authentication. For some people, it's basically security. And as you look at, to me, identity very simply is my info that was built and harnessed by enterprises that I transact with. So basically, everybody has got a piece of my identity. My bank, I use Google search, I have Yahoo Mail, Telus, <laughs> every carrier I visit outside Telus, my insurance company, my doctor. So to me, each one of those enterprises or entities or providers has a piece of my identity. And the question is, how do they come together to make my life easier? And who does the work? And who monetizes it? So if you look at the next chart, it's the, it's the, 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 the triple leg of the tripod, which is the device ecosystem. So in the old days, the airtime or, or the bandwidth was the service. And you have a whole bunch of app stores and devices and ecosystems that people love. People buy things because of the ecosystem they support. For example, people buy an Android phone just for the sake of Android. And even though Android is not a phone, a di different manufacturer. But the next step is, is, I believe, that's the area that nobody's occupied yet, which is how do we get traditional service providers who are networked to leverage these device ecosystems. So how do we focus on hospitality? How do we focus on healthcare? And that's the leg from the devices. It's not really giving you a radio signal so you can go to an app store and buy an application. That doesn't require Telus. But how do I sit down and enable a hotel to be successful? Or how do I enable a bank to be more successful? Or more, more fundamentally, as citizens, how do we work with the government to ensure their applications on our network make sense for the actual end consumers or citizens. And, and the key question is, when you look at all of this, how does that transact on the network and through the app stores and the internet itself at the end of the day? So, so if I look at the next chart, for us from a provider evolution, we've always been the trusted partner. We've had the facilities. We have your credit card information. We have your address. We have customer care, which is unique 24-7. So, so as we evolve into application enablement, it's very critical to know what does that really mean. It's not us building the applications. Actually, there will be some applications that are Telus built, but it's us putting the right systems and mechanisms in place, all the way from subscriber info, device info, to charging, to enable open innovation. So anybody can ride on our network. So going from the walled garden approach to the managed garden. So, so yes, the managed garden, everybody has to pay a fee, and that's how we make our money. But that's there to give a superior experience to the end consumer and make the lives of the consumer as they go through multiple enterprises much easier. So, so if I look at the next chart, I, I, don't want to make, I want to make sure that people do not believe things happen easily. We've started down this path four years ago, and we're not there yet. And, and one of the things I keep mentioning to my colleagues and, and my clients and, and whoever will hear me on this point, transformation is a way of life. So, so I've got a number of challenges. We still have them. They'll be around for a while. And the first is, is platforms and their business case. Because in the old days, you wanted, the service was voicemail. You build a business case around voicemail, 30% or 50% of the people took that on. It was easy to do business case. The era is changing where you're building an enabling infrastructure with some services at 1% uptake. And that's tough to justify with a 1% uptake anything. So, so the key is platforms, harnessing those. And I'm happy we've. It was pulling teeth initially, but for the last few years, we're on our third generation service delivery framework. We're working on our online charging system, so that's fantastic news. It's getting gain with Intellis. It also means a new business model, new revenue model. And, and that was the first challenge that we had to overcome. The next one, very simply, is legacy. One of the questions we never ask ourselves is, well, we've been around for 100 years. There's good service, good margin happening. What is happening to those legacy systems, and how do we move them forward? And, and that is a very critical point. A lot of people spend too much time reinventing old services with new technology or reinventing new systems with new technology. That is the kiss of death. Another point that I have is you cannot just have a high-level vision. You've got to take that high-level vision down to multiple levels. And that's what we've done. Because it's so easy to say we're going to go on application enablement and then farm that transformation or that business model 
to multiple entities that exist within our organization. And you know what they do? People are excited. It's a new thing. They'll just do the best they can within their own environment. And that silo transformation is, is a killer. And last but not least, on the challenger side, it's the whole notion of people. Uh, TELUS has been profitable. Uh, I can't complain about my uh, stock price <laughs> or the TELUS performance in the network or uh, globally within our own peers. But the reality of the matter is, so it's tough to convince people that you know you got to change. You only change when you're having massive trouble. So it was exceptionally difficult to make sure that the people who are running massive revenues today feel the need to transform. So in a lot of cases, it was different people. So, so that area of people, culture, the willingness to change has to be addressed. Now, I don't want to leave on a negative note. So yes, we've had challenges, but we've had great successes. And the, the, the first and foremost is, that the new business models that we're able to leverage, like uh, our time to market has dropped by a factor of five and eight in some cases for new services. The cost of ownership for a service has dropped by a factor of 10. Uh, I mean, I, they're a blanket statement, but they're true like on average. So, so we're pretty excited about our investment in platforms. And regardless of the challenges, it just proves the path. As you go to application enablement, uh, we've gone from the era of making uh, $7 extra ARPU for a service a month to making seven cents, and we are making money that way. Uh, the second point is, it showed us that uh, transformation is not network or IT or marketing. Actually, it's truly business transformation. It has to get focused on the business model, and that's what justifies everything we're doing. And last but not least, on the success factor, I think it's made us uh, truly grow and recognize as a leadership team at TELUS. So, so we've got support at the CEO level, but it's also important to take empowerment beyond just uh, lip speak, right? Like truly empower people and provide them with concrete examples of what needs to be done beyond a high level statement. So uh, with that, I, I hope uh, you found the last 10 minutes or so informative on what we've done and some of the challenges we faced. And I love Telco 2.0 for their out of the box thinking and I wanted to share with you this, this small advertisement I saw beside my office, it was outside a church. And it talks about, <laughs> The best wireless network in the world is prayer. And, and you know, you can pray as much as you want, so it's unlimited. God is always there, so great QoS, and it is 24-7. <laughs> so thank you for your time and attention.